I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 21st of February, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life in Leon, Nicaragua. And today we have no uh, daily update. It's just a busy week and we are gonna spend today doing a barrio walk. Today, it is 95 degrees, it is three o'clock in the afternoon, and that means I'm going out for a long walk in the intense heat because I'm really stupid. Anyway, we're starting from the cemetery. This is the cemetery at the Triangle intersection. That's a weird way to put it. Uh, as you head west out of Leon, uh, this is the double-sided bus stop just behind me. Uh, we have done this cemetery a few different times, however, never on this particular street. So this is all in a new view. For you, it's also a new view for me. I've never actually walked this particular path. I've seen it from the road over there and the road over there, but never this one. So, I mean, it's a little bit different, but we're gonna be going past Lasage University again. And then from there, we're gonna be exploring the neighborhood that seems to be a support village for the university located just north of it. So this is a bit of uh, an exploring adventure for all of us and uh, yeah, I think it's going to be fun. It's not going to be the longest of barrio walks and it's a really hot day, but it's also really beautiful and I have been kind of sedentary the last few days because I have had actually, at, for the day that I'm recording this for, I have uh, strep throat, I think. I am now, by the time I'm recording this, mostly better, but I still do have it. I've been taking antibiotics and I'm feeling mostly better but I had to take a few days and not do any exercise or anything. Uh, so this is uh, working to catch up on that, but I don't want to push it too hard. We're going to be heading kind of northwest on this road and exploring the neighborhood. In a recent episode, we were talking about asphalt and pavers. I just want to point out, so this is Nicaragua 14. You see the traffic on back there. And this road, whatever it is, is asphalt, asphalt, and then it turns into pavers as it gets off. So you can see as they change the designation of the road and whether it's up against the intersection that they switch materials. Some of the things I'm not sure that we mentioned uh, in the other video about asphalt and pavers, I just wanted to point this out because there was additional discussion about it, is that one is that there's no snow here. So we have to worry about snow plows. Snow plows wreak havoc with pavers or vice versa. So you really can't have snowy conditions uh, and have pavers. Uh, the other, and I think I did mention this, but um, when you have hilly terrain, uh, asphalt has a tendency to melt in high heat and slide. Pavers don't do that. And so you're able to have pavers uh, under conditions that are very hot and have a bit of uh, incline, which is important in places like this, where that is almost always the case. This is Lachazie University from the side. This is the cemetery in front of it. But you can see some of the tall buildings back there. They're painted blue, so they kind of blend into the sky just a little bit, but it's it's just interesting that that's what we're coming up on. So off on this walk, this particular bit walking past the university, not super exciting. Uh, we've been pretty close to this before, so that's not really what I wanted to show you, but there is a neighborhood hiding back here on a side road, really close to the neighborhood of Belen that we did in a recent barrio walk, and uh, but I didn't get a chance to come over to this one, so I'm doing another walk. I need the exercise anyway, not a big deal, and we're going to explore it. Have a... Uh, this is actually a big mural over here. I did not know that that was here. I don't think I've ever done this road. It's an interesting little garden. And I think, I think that's like a restaurant, but there's not a single sign of any sort whatsoever. Since we're coming past the university, I will show this. I can only do so much because it is brutal heat, brutal sun, and the camera's gonna overheat if I do long segments. But this road, when we did Lasage University the last time, which is, oh, many months ago, maybe maybe close to a year, maybe six months, this road was open and we walked through it. That's how we got to the university. That's why the little jog that we just did, I've never seen. And now we're coming past the entrance to the university, which I've shown before. Really nice looking university here in the city. And this mama dog hanging out. So this is all stuff we've seen a few times on the show, but uh, nice to come back, see how things are. And I'm looking forward to finding some new stuff. Let's go. 
Okay, we're just past the university and we are on the turn in the road that allows us to head north to the neighborhood that is hidden behind it. I don't know what its name is, and so we're going to have to do some uh, investigation to figure that out while we're here. But I want to show some things. First, we're going to pop up a map so you can see where we are. So I'm just going to stand here and talk for a moment. We're located in an area we've come past several times, uh, and we're just taking a different turn and exploring it a little bit differently. We're at the northern or western edge of the university, and uh, now that the map is is gone. I want to swing you around and show you uh, this road right down here. If I can see it, it is so sunny I can't see the screen at all. There is a, a little side road there, and that dog is heading off to it, that we have walked through several times to connect this road to the neighborhood behind it. And where that truck is, that is the fields of the university that we walk past sometimes and see people out uh, doing sports in or just taking laps. This is another cemetery that's up here at the top of the hill, and it's quite nice. Oh, here's the guy waving to us from the bus. That is one of the 60 new buses that Nicaragua just recently got. Um, and uh, the driver was waving to us, so I wanted to show that. So this, this cemetery uh, is on the other side of the university. So it's a little bit weird that the university has a cemetery on either side. This one is much larger and uh, much less known as it is off the beaten path. I'm just going to walk over and get a view of it. I've never actually looked into it before, so that will be, I don't know if interesting is the right word, but we're going to show it because people want to know things. So this is the, is the cemetery here, quite normal, on a hillside. It has some structures. We've seen smoke and stuff coming out of there before. I think there's been people cooking. There's a keyboard on the ground. That was really weird. And uh, all right, we're going to head up this attractive pavered road. Ooh, I should not have walked in there. I now have burrs in my sandals. That was stupid. Stupid. That really hurts. I have to take my sandals off now and fix that. All right, we're going to be back. All right, this is interesting. So we just came up from behind there. The university is this wall over here, and it clearly sits on top of a hill. And as soon as you come up over this rise, you're heading down quite a bit again. So we're going to be heading down into this neighborhood to explore. And I'm really interested because this could be absolutely anything this could be uh it could be very very amazing housing because it's part of the university district um, and i see a lot of people walking it seems to be uh an area with a lot of pedestrian traffic so uh, it has a lot of potential i think this is going to be interesting um and i'm taking a moment as a crowd of people walks by there's like constant people walking up and down this road which is really neat that it feels like such a remote part of the city and yet i mean there's not very much car traffic and there's not very much sound. It's very fresh air and, and pretty quiet. But there's people walking, walking kids and families walking and, and like teenagers going places, just constantly going by. And it's like, where, where are they going? What are they doing? I don't know. But we're going to head into this neighborhood and find out and hopefully figure out the name of this neighborhood. But I, I'm not holding a lot of hope for that one. All right, the first thing of interest is that there are lots for sale here. I have no idea if any of these have ever been sold. That is definitely an old sign. We can see it up there. Uh, they sell lots. I can't quite tell what it's called, but the number's up there. And there's this road running along it. And you can tell the lots must be behind this wall of agave, but I can't tell if there's like an active lotification there or if it's simply uh, something that was started and then never, never actually took off. But... Um, we're already at the top. Because of the incline, I want to start zigzagging through the neighborhood and show it to you. So I'm uh, taking this moment to switch the way that we're filming. And this is where we're coming from. And uh, we're heading in right now. Make this a little bit smaller. So I have no idea. So this cute reddish colored house, someone's going to tell me that's orange, that's pink. I don't know. Um, remember, I do have sunglasses on, so my colors are, are a bit screwed up. That is a store on the corner. This is a hard packed dirt road. It's actually very, very functional. And this white and orange on the left is really cute. Hola. And this concrete wall we're walking past, this is the back wall of the university. So that's, that's where we are. This should be the north wall. Um, and I believe you can see it up there. There is, that is part of the university grounds because uh, it wraps around. This neighborhood is not real huge. That big windmill up there is part of the 
power generation. I don't know if it's power generation for the university or if it's power generation research for the university, but either way, that is part of Lasage. Now, one thing I don't like about these kinds of roads is that the dirt, you can kind of see it. It's very silty. It's incredibly fine. When it gets wet and packed, it's nice and solid. But when it's really dry, it gets super dusty and the amount of silt, okay, that's a paved road down there. We're going to be back to that in just a little bit. Um, the silt becomes very slippery, and when there's rocks on it, which there always are, and you step on a rock on the silt, you slip. It's like being on ice. It is a problem. Buenas tardes. <laughs> Another little shop there, and this appears to be one as well that we're going past. They at least sell ice, if nothing else. Bye bye. They're calling to me. This is a cute little neighborhood. I'm interested to see what it looks like. They're all yelling at me from down the street. Ah, me llamo Scott. Mucho gusto. <laughs> They're all giggling. All right, so this is the southeast corner of whatever neighborhood this is. These little neighborhoods often don't have signs, so if Google doesn't know, often we're in the dark. Some work going on. You can see there's another little pulperia that does Tigo recharging. There's very real possibility that I'm the first person to ever walk through here with the camera, so <laughs> who knows? <laughs> Some of these places are so out of the way, you're like, hmm, how, what are these? How out of place am I, really? So this is one of the more main streets. Definitely very small houses, but perfectly nice little area. When is Tardes? Hi, okay. This place sells firewood. This one sells toothpaste. Toothpaste and sodas. Hello. Oh, this dog wants to say hi. Hello. Oh, now you're shy. Okay. What is are this? All right, we're coming up on the paved road. What is are this? Oh, that's cute. I wonder if you can see the little designs going on in that little greenhouse. It's very cute. Oh, the bus is going through the neighborhood. Okay, I was not expecting that. Oh, oh, the kids are back. Hola! <laughs> they knew I had to be walking past there. There's nowhere else to go. Another place selling toothpaste. I think it is safe to say that we've gone far enough that I am a novelty where I'm walking. I'm always amazed by the, the sheer number of stores. Like, I get the logic. If everyone sells one little thing, then everybody has a little bit of a business. And... Uh, kind of everyone benefits, right? One person sells deodorant, one person sells toothpaste, one person sells soda, and it's just, you know where to go for what you need, and it's all over town. What is that, this? So you always have a reason to go somewhere, and uh, hold on, gotta get out of this guy's way. I am not sure what he's selling. Oh. What is that, this? That was a cute house there. And then there's something that looks like the gates to the lots that don't really exist right there. So if you were to buy one of those lots, that's probably your gate. Yes, are you barking at me? No one ever comes by here and you don't know what to do? So this is the road that we came in on already. Oh, and there's the bus. 
at the end of the road. So we're gonna go investigate that. There's a cute little red house over here, a little garden. Trying to see what they sell. I can't quite see phones for sure, but oh, this is really pretty. I think that's just a small house back there with a really nice garden. I love this kind of tile is popular here in Nicaragua. Look how beautiful that is. There must be stuff behind. I have a feeling that may be a restaurant that doesn't have a label because that looking back in there, like it's really decorated like it's a restaurant. It looks like it has stuff. I'm gonna get run over by a truck here. And uh, all right, here's where the pavers end or turn depending on how you look at it and head a new direction which we are going to take okay so that's all dirt road back there that's where the bus is sitting and there's people selling food on the side of the road as one does that is the thing here no need for anything fancy just sell set up a table on the side of the road and uh sell simple food items and everybody just walks by and gets their food, which is really so cool. Like, how sad is it that we don't do that in America? Like, I think it really is this great part of the culture that there's this delicious food that, you know, the neighborhoods get known for, you know, the lady on the corner, she makes great tortillas. And, and this guy over here, he makes really good, uh, um, refreshing drinks and, and they just sit out in the afternoon and sell them or whatever. And they get known for that and, and people know where to go. And you often get this really cool variety and it's unique to your neighborhood. And it's just, it's just cool. And uh, we really lack that, that entire part of the culture in the U.S. Another little store with drinks. Buenas tardes. All right, we got the chicken bus hanging out here in town. We have a, quite a hill in front of us, but boy, if there's a hill in front of us, that seems like it's probably the place we got to go. I'm going to, ooh, but we have pavers down to the left. Ooh, we are torn. So this is the street. Those are those kids again. They're way up there. We're going to wave. They're waving. They're excited to see us. And uh, we're going to head this way before we come back to... They're yelling my name. Hola, adio. <laughs> I didn't carry business cards with me or I'd hand them out because then they could go watch the show. What is are these? She had some kind of frozen dessert. That looked fantastic. All right. More road. There's actually more streets here than I was expecting. What is are these? <laughs> that was funny. She definitely ducked away from the camera giggled and ran away a car that feels out of place but these are nice roads unfinished house could be your unfinished house i don't know maybe someone's actively working on it all right there's a whole gaggle of people here watching something interesting happening on the road we're gonna find out we're gonna join this gaggle and look and see what's happening on the road that is clearly the action going on oh this kind of turns into nothing here. This may literally be the end of the road. What is that? These? All right, super ultra dirt road here. Ah, what is that? These? I had seen on the map that there was a restaurant here, and there is. Bar and restaurant, friends for forever. Okay, this looks really cool. I wanna come check this out. Not right now, cause I'm out for a walk, but this warrants a trip. That's really interesting. Um, I'd seen that on the map. And these are the things that I find most interesting is when there's an actual, like I find all of it interesting, obviously. And I think that's one of the reasons you guys like the show is cause I'm like, whoa, I'm like a little kid just discovering everything, right? But, I mean, that's how I feel, right? I enjoy it. And I enjoy meeting the new people. I enjoy finding the new neighborhoods. I hope you can see some of this as I walk by. This is like a big 
outdoor park. It's kind of a campestre, but we're not quite in the country exactly. Um, there's loud music going on. There's a lot of people in there. Um, so these kinds of things I find absolutely interesting and amazing um, that one, you have these cool little communities that no one knows about, you don't even know their name, and no one knows how to find it, and you come to them and there's these little shops, and of course a lot of them are just, you know, normal pulperias, they're not selling anything interesting, it's just soda or whatever, but it's always nice that you can stop absolutely anywhere and get a drink. As someone who's out walking, man do I appreciate that, that's fantastic. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is the unique things, the people who are making goods, here I'm going to turn the camera a little bit, while we walk, that goes up to the street we were talking about, and I just want to go a little bit on this dirt one just to kind of see where it goes but it seems to peter out into really not much of anything um, and there's a wall up here i may have to stop for a minute and let the camera cool down but so you've got these people selling things and that's really interesting but then sometimes you get actual full-blown invested businesses with with a liquor license and a kitchen and music and they're on the map um, but no one knows to look for for them and it just gets really really interesting and unique and like what is this and like what makes this happen what is the what is the driving force that makes it all work i don't know but that it's so cool that those things do exist and sometimes thrive and like that one has a lot of people who's going there is it people from this neighborhood is it people from all over i have no idea you can't look them up on the web of course there's not there's no website there's no no facebook page in most cases maybe this one does and i just didn't find it but like there's so little in many cases and you're just stumbling on this, this not giant, but a good sized business that's actually doing stuff. Like that's super interesting in the United States that would never exist. Never in a million years would you be able to have a community like this, have a business like that. We are on this weird little spot. I gotta, before I turn the camera off for a minute. So there's where we came from. There's this big hill, people are cutting trees up there. A lot of trash, I think, washed over the edge. And so this is where, during storms, things often wash. We've got a big wall we're coming up on. Obviously, we're on the backside. That may be a wall of trash. I don't know what I'm looking at. And then that is the, that is the uh, uh, windmill way up there, way above me. And so I'm gonna stop for a minute, check out the map, see if we can figure out what's going on and where we should head next. All right, we're continuing down the same dirt road and we're by the same wall. Uh, it turns out this is the road that connects the unknown barrio or reparto or colonia, I don't know, that we were in, the one without a name that's really interesting, to where we were on a recent walk where we went to Belen and the North Sutiava barrios. And so I am attempting uh, to kind of go back that way. There didn't look like too much of interest to go back the other way. Although there was some options. That's the problem. You always have to choose what it is you're going to see. Now, this is interesting. Now, notice we're on this extreme dirt road. And it's just kind of woods and little things. And then this structure, which is quite large, and has like these really big open areas with lots of, lots of open air. And that is modern. Well, within reason. And not at all what you expect in this place. Like, surprise! back road cool house and a papaya tree with a whole bunch of of garland on it just tinsel tinsel a whole bunch of tinsel on it just because just because you can because every day is a reason to celebrate which is a good attitude really life is worth celebrating you don't need a reason life itself life itself is worth celebrating especially when you live in nicaragua all right, continuing up that dirt road, it turns into pavers, and we're back to where we were the other day, coming past the Sutiava Hospital. Uh, I'm going to turn the camera a little bit so you can not get blinded by uh, everything. So that was a that was a nice walk. Discovered a new barrio. Not a lot of specific stuff to show, but it was a neat little area. Um, I'm going to show on the map and. Uh, yeah, pretty cool, I think. I'm going to attempt a completely different path home. I need to look at a map and figure out where I'm going to go. But this is the intersection here uh, at the hospital where we originally... This is also where we did the asphalt and pavers talk. Uh, we walked down this way and then came back the way I just came. Uh, and this is technically... 
So this is Belen over here, and the space between these two roads is the Reparto Belen, and then this one was a different one whose marker is just down there a little ways, and I had said that on the map, oh, voila. <laughs> Everybody wants to be on the show today. It's a popular day. All right, I'm gonna pause for a minute, figure out where we wanna go for a path back, and I'll be right back. All right, I was just coming down the road. These ladies are here, what? adio. And uh, I got this frozen mango drink. I'm not really sure what it is. We're gonna, we're gonna try this. This is only uh, 10 Cordoba, so about a, just a little bit more than 25 cents, but I can't hold the camera and eat it, so I'm going to give it a try in just a second. Okay, we can actually do this. So this is mango and honey. It's not actually frozen, but it's not warm. It's, it's cool. Mm. Really good. It's got a bunch of fruit in it. And like this, I don't know quite how to describe it. It's, uh, it's kind of like a fruit pudding in a way. Mm. Very tasty though. And for 30 cents or less, you're walking down the street and you want to get a little treat like this. It's just two girls sitting in the street. So cool. I love it. This is a perfect example of what I was talking about just a few minutes ago. All right, the camera crashed, but we are continuing our adventure. I still have this uh, empty uh, container to deal with, but that's okay. So the road we were coming down originally is straight across here, but the uh, Colegio Calasens is directly in the way. So we had to go around it. We went around to the east and it was coming down the east side of the school is where I found this delicious mango honey thing. And what I think they do is I think they add honey or some type of sugar, in this case, honey, they said, but I think in some of the other ones it's sugar, and they add it to the mango stone because there's always that fruit around the stone. Here, mangoes are one, there's everywhere, right? Mango trees, so many of them. We have multiple just at the house. And uh, we're gonna be having mangoes soon at the house, so I'll be showing that as well um, in like a few weeks. Uh, but we have tons of them, big trees. And uh, so mangoes are big here. People eat them in lots of different ways. They eat them sweet, they eat them uh, green with like chili and salt, which is actually really good. It almost feels like you're eating potato chips, obviously much healthier, uh, but it kind of gives you, it's a crunchy, savory thing instead of sweet. This is very sweet. What I think they do is when they're preparing uh, mangoes that they're selling other places, like on the buses, they'll sell mango slices. Um, and then of course you have the stone that's left over and it's otherwise wasted. I think what they're doing is adding honey to the stone, letting it sit until the whole thing turns into a mixture of sweet mango, honey, gooey goodness. And uh, so a lot of it's the stone, which of course you can just throw away after you're done. You kind of want to suck on the stone to get all the, the sweetened flesh off of it because it's freaking delicious. That was, that was really good. I would have liked it if it was a little bit colder, but then they would have had to have a refrigerator because uh, they, they just had a little case on the side of the road. That's great. I, I love these things. I love discovering little bits of food. And that's not a food I'd ever had before, right? It's all flavors that kind of made sense. It wasn't like super exotic, but it was also really different. That would be an amazing flavor for like a cocktail. I have an idea. All right, so we're straight across now from Calisans, and uh, we're on this boulevard, which I showed in a Sutiava episode not that long ago. And uh, you can see it here. And we looked a bit at this house. We didn't go very far. We just went in a little bit. And uh, this house is actually for sale, I believe. Uh, and it's a really beautiful house um, from what we can tell, really beautiful grounds and trees and everything. And then you can see the road going up on either side of the boulevard. We are gonna head up this. So I looked it up this time. This is one of the two streets that is the uh, neighborhood of San Mateo, uh, which is another pretty interesting and cool place to potentially live. Pretty small for sure, uh, but it is one that I've been wanting to do for a while. So we are heading through San Mateo now, uh, and it should, if everything goes right, we are on, um, I forgot to say, this boulevard is also uh, Leon, um, uh, uh, Calle or Avenida uh, 18, DSE Ocho. Uh, so if you want to look us up on the west side of the city in Sutiava, DSE Ocho 18, that is one we're heading down. And if this goes as I expect, we're going to be running into the airport or at least the airport road. Uh, and then we'll be turning there. So these are some cute houses, as you can see. This, and over here, this has to be a business. What the, I don't know what that is, but that is that designation is for hotels. Punto Asuro, and there's a swimming pool in there. I have no idea what this is. This may be a cool hotel that I need to look up. I've never heard of that. But there's people in there using the pool, and it's an absolutely stunning location. So interesting, but way outside the tourist center, if you were coming to Leon as a visitor, 
it'd be pretty hard to want to be out this far, but there are a few cool hotels out this far. You just never know. That is an apartment building up there behind those other buildings. That is not something you see very often in Nicaragua in general and in Leon, especially. I know some in the south in Fundido, uh, which I will take you guys to at some point. It is a super long walk for me in most cases. That's another apartment building right there. Wow. These may be student housings because of um, the university, right? So there, there could be uh, people staying at Lasage uh, or going to school at Lasage because that says for rent and that is Apartments San Mateo. I'm gonna walk over because there is a public trash can there, which is absolutely fantastic because I'm carrying my trash like a good responsible person. All right. That's uh, probably incredibly basic apartments, but it's good to know that there is a great location in a safe neighborhood with apartment buildings back here and an empty lot. Who knows what that will be someday. So th this is that this is a boulevard is a really big deal as well. We are just coming up on three miles of walking on today's trek. Just a short one. That bright pink Bougainvillea, that should be the color of Nicaragua. I say that, that is the color of the government. That is the official government color. Um, I'm, that must be where they take it from. So this house is really interesting. It looks like it's divided in the middle, but that is clearly one structure that is really, really large. I have this black dog following me. That might be serious black. All right, interesting houses here. I hope you can see them with the sun glare. Um, I'm probably on the wrong side of the road for some of this because I'm extra susceptible to the sun. And we have a cross street here that kind of winds back around. Or maybe it's like a cul-de-sac. Oh, it's more like a cul-de-sac. Well, we got to investigate this. Hold on. This place with the, the curve, this place is fantastic. What a neat little spot we've discovered. Only on the Scott Allen Miller vlog, everybody. You're not going to find this kind of content anywhere else. No one else is quite as willing to get lost as me. These great gardens, these stone walls going into the driveway, not just on the outside. Very classy. Cute house over here. Some small ones. All of these look pretty nice. Buenas tardes. Okay, I didn't get a buenas tardes there. They're wondering why I'm here. And we have a cell phone tower there. I don't think this thing in front of us is a road. I think that's an, an unimproved lot, but it might be. It's a little bit hard to say. All right, we're heading south again for our little detour. Stuff like this tells you it's a great neighborhood. All right, that's a cute house. This gives me a feel of a Managua house right here. I hope you can see it. It's difficult through all the foliage and gates. But this is a this is a really nice community. There's there's clearly a mix of things, right? There's some very poor houses, some older things in here. There's a cute dog behind the gate. Uh, but there's also some really nice, interesting houses as well. Things that would be reminiscent of Veracruz, which is very nearby. We're, we're only at most half a mile from Veracruz, I would say. So some neat designs. Oh, we're gonna look we're going to go over and look down and see what that is as well. All of these houses along here, these are the ones you couldn't see as I was walking, have a lot of promise to them. Let's head over here. And I love how quiet this neighborhood is. There's some people, there's a few cars, but not a lot. Are these stairs that go down? Is this just a wash? Oh, that's just a wash. You don't want to go down that. Not at all. But that is another road down there with interesting stuff. And that is, so that is the other, that's a crossroad down there is more of San Mateo. So all of this is the San Mateo neighborhood. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how far it goes. It's a really small area. That yellow house is really cute. And I like that they, they seem to have done a lot of these, that two houses side by side match so that they look like 
they're really a single structure. They must be single construction is my guess. Uh, and then sold as two different things with zero, zero uh, lot lines, but not very big, but very cute. This is a, definitely an attractive upscale area. I'm gonna guess no, uh, no foreigners living in here, but possible. doing some cleaning there all right that is the end of the boulevard portion of 18 now it becomes a much smaller road and i believe although i'm not sure i think this is where san mateo ends so san mateo is only north of this road that we are now crossing so this cute blue house with the beautiful red and a little bit of pink flowers over here uh is a starting point of San Mateo. You can see this road that we're looking at here. You're not gonna be able to see this with the sun. Let me cross the road so I can show you this. These are nice houses along here as well. At least some of them. I can't tell down there. The ones up here, very, very nice. This is a cute area. And uh, across the road, none of these are, you know, they're not ultra fantastic, but they are definitely nice, nice houses and people out for a walk. And uh, so this road that we're on is actually, this is second and it ends. We're actually uh, going to be going down on the very last cross street. 18 is the last thing that crosses it. So if we go back, there's only one more street of San Mateo, but we're it's down where that person is walking roughly. We're gonna save that for another trip. We're gonna keep going down 18 and uh, and we're gonna head to the airport. That's the path we're gonna, we can't see everything every time, everywhere. It's the world is too big of a place with too many optional paths. It just doesn't work. So that is our plan. We're heading back down 18, just behind us. All right, we're heading down 18, which turns into a, what goes from the big boulevard into this tiny little road that just goes down to the corner and turns. Oh, there's a little kitty. I don't know if you can see the little kitty. What are this? This is a very different neighborhood than San Mateo very quickly. Some cute colorful houses over here on the right. Boy, that sun glare might be a little bit rough. Oh, that is a cute little street there. I love the narrow pavered roads. Those are like my favorite. They always lead to the most interesting places. But we're not taking it today. We have places to get. So we're continuing down the curving 18 road. Oh, there's like a... Like an auto garage over here. Hopefully I'm still going where I think I'm going. I am. It's funny how quickly the boulevard of 18 turns into this. What are they? <laughs> This is another one of those roads where it's really easy to turn your foot. Notice the tiny little stream going down the middle of the road. That is often how gray water runoff is handled. It's coming out of that pipe there. And it's enough that it's created a green little streamway going down the road. Because obviously cars can't come through there. All right. This should be... 17, I believe. It's funny to see a school crossing sign on a road that feels like it's a pedestrian way. Oh, there's a little doggy. Hello. This is a very cute little road. Oh, look at this. I love these built-in pot uh, planters. Very classy. These little essentially pedestrian ways have so much potential.
What are there these? It kind of gives it a feel like like old European villages because that's how wide they are. What are these? Oh, look at the ravine. All right. Now what road are we coming up on? I'm actually not sure. Now I have to check the map. Oh, according to the map, this is a corner. Oh, it is. There's nothing to the left. We're almost, that's a very cute little green entrance. Still really nice pavers out here. Looks like some nice houses in front of us. We are just about to to Calle 6th, which is off to our left. We're running alongside of it. Look down there. Ah, so this road goes down to a corner because the river is there. So this is, we're kind of up against the river. There's a little shop. What is Darles? This is an entire neighborhood built out of little one lane roads on pavers. And that is the airport we're looking at. That is one of the airport hangars directly in front of us. So that is sixth and we can just take a right and head home via sixth. With a lot of sun in our faces. All right, I'm hoping you can see me. I can't see anything. That was a really cool, sorry, oh, there's a little puppy. Hold on, you have to see this little puppy. Look how cute he is. Look how cute you are. Hi. Oh my gosh, he's adorable. Now he wants to come play. Oh, that was wrong. Okay, so that was our quick dog interlude. And we were, what is Darthes? Everybody thinks I'm the funniest person when I stop and talk to all the animals. When we were in Ometepe, I forgot to tell this story on the Ometepe videos. We were in, uh, we were in the taxi and, uh, and when the taxi was going down the road, there was some chickens with, with baby chicks in the road and they wouldn't move and the taxi is getting closer and closer to them. And I'm like, let me out. So I jumped out of the taxi and I shooed the chickens across the road and all the people standing outside were just laughing hysterically at this image of this old foreign guy chasing chickens out of the way so taxis could get through on the island. It was, uh, it was apparently rather entertaining. Is a interesting little path. I don't think I've shown that before. Yeah, this is the open fields of the airport here on my left. What a gorgeous day. All right, I hope you've been enjoying our barrio walk. I think I'm going to wrap it up there. No need to uh, ramble on through things we've been through before pretty soon. Unfortunately, we're going to be walking through that burning trash area that you've seen on the airport episode. So no need to film that. And the sun is going to be in our faces. So really all you can do is look at me in the sunset light, which I understand is nice, but we're just going to get the walk done. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And uh, of course, share on social media. Tell your friends about the show. Get out there on Reddit and LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook and all those places. Let people know about the show, individual episodes, the show in general, whatever. Get out there. If you want to really support us, obviously buying me a coffee is the biggest support. But short of that, watch an extra episode, like an extra episode, share it with people. Those are the things that, that get the show growing. And uh, get down there in the comments. Uh, say hi, ask questions, uh, talk about Nicaragua, find out more information whatever. Thanks for joining me. I will see all of you tomorrow.